I recently did a video on the new General Motors Sake electric hot hatch that it's a crazy vehicle. It's got 1,200 kilometers, I should say, of range, electric range. The reason is because of the battery it uses. Now, I didn't realize it's actually using a solid state battery. Apparently, the battery in that vehicle is coming to market in 2026, being mass manufactured by Sake. They own GM Sake, they own a part of a solid state, or, well, of a battery company in China, which makes these solid state batteries. They've been testing them now for five years since 2021. And the energy density is nearly three times the energy density of lithium ion phosphate batteries. What does this mean for cars coming potentially next year? Range, realistically, real world, could be around 1,000 kilometers or 600 miles. It's um, game on. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. Great to have you with us. Um, I'm saying arm. I don't usually say arms because I'm not usually thinking to myself, well, what do I say about this vehicle? But I can, well, not this vehicle, these batteries, but I can tell you this, the energy density of these batteries, they first were testing them back in 2021 was about 368 watt hours per kilogram. The new version, it's got a patent on these batteries. In fact, the truth is they have 26,000 patents on solid state batteries, ridiculous. But this new version of the battery, Peyton says it has an energy density of 400 watt hours per kilogram. And if you think about it, that is double the energy density of the best lithium ion phosphate batteries you can get today, 400 watt hours per kilogram. Meaning double the range of a lot of EVs that you know, right? Double the range. So if there's EVs out there, there's plenty of them with 500 kilometers of range using lithium ion phosphate batteries you're literally looking at double the range, but it's not really double because most of the lithium ion phosphate batteries in EVs that are sold outside of China don't utilize the latest lithium ion phosphate batteries with energy density of 200 watt hours per kilogram. They're using closer to one, well, BYD's 165, 160 to 165. Uh, then you've got uh, Geely's blade, their short blade battery, the Aegis battery, that's about 190 watt hours per kilogram. That's probably the best. Uh, others are using, I believe, Xpeng is 175 watt hours per kilogram for their lithium ion phosphate batteries, which is quite good. But also, then there's others, uh, Tesla, I think they're at about 170 watt hours per kilogram. So, going to 400 watt hours per kilogram, all of a sudden, you've got people saying to themselves, Would I buy a hybrid? when I can get an EV with a thousand kilometers of range, when I can get an EV with 600 miles of range, what is the purpose of buying a hybrid? Looking at Norway, 97.5% of the market there is now fully electric. People are not buying hybrids. Very risky right now to buy a plug-in hybrid. Manufacturers don't like it when I say things like this, but I'm just telling the truth because it is. Plug-in hybrid technology right now what are we looking at charging speeds? Charging speeds are 50 kilowatt DC, something like that. I mean, there's some that are a bit faster, some that are a bit slower. That's about the average, 50 kilowatt DC. Yeah, so you're sitting around for 30, 40 minutes to charge a relatively smallish battery. There's some newer plug-in hybrids that have about 70 kilowatt fast charging. Yeah. Do you really want to sit around waiting that long to charge your hybrid on a, on a road trip when the equivalent electric car can charge at 500 kilowatt? I mean, let's say you don't find a 500 kilowatt charger, you can still charge at 350 kilowatt, right? Charge the, charge the battery pack in 10 minutes. So you're charging three times faster. Now, this is already the case today. There's already the latest battery technology coming out from China. There's new Seeker 7X, new Xpeng G6, 500 kilowatt fast charging, both of them, right? So charging in around 10, 12 minutes. So then you've got this super fast charging, double that, combine that with energy density that's more than double today's batteries. So... This is why not only internal combustion, internal combustion is finished. We all know that. It's, it's game over. But it also says to yourself, are you really going to go out and put $70,000 or $50,000, whatever it is, on a new plug-in hybrid when, first of all, you've got these new EVs coming out with massive range, right? We've already got huge range EVs coming out within the next six months, but then we're going to even go one step bigger, plus super fast charging. So you're looking at yourself... You you say to yourself, well, I want to do long trips, I want to tow, etc. And then all of a sudden these EVs come to market, which enable you to not need to buy a hybrid, which has very slow DC fast charging. Alternatively, remember, 
There is e-revs in China right now, which we know can charge at 500 kilowatt. The new Xpeng e-revs, all of them will have 500 kilowatt charging. Uh, Geely as well, they're going to have super fast charging, I believe 500 kilowatt approximately as well. And these e-revs will give you legitimately 400 kilometers of range, 400, not the kind of 50 to 100, maybe 120, 120 kilometers of range you're going to get in a plug-in hybrid. So they'll charge at 500 kilowatt charging and they'll give you 400 kilometers of range. So plug-in hybrids are a bit, a bit dangerous right now because you're going to get squeezed from both sides. You're going to get squeezed from this new tech from these e-revs, which are giving you three to four times more range and literally about five to 10 times the charging speed. And then you're getting squeezed from these new latest generation electric cars. So, so I'm trying to warn people, I know the car industry does not like this. They're like, no, no, you should buy now, you should buy now. But I personally emotionally feel like my job here is to give you guys the best information. My job here is to say, you know, people say to me, if I buy an EV this year, I'm worried because depreciation next year, right? Um, and that's going to happen forever legitimate concern but it's going to happen forever there's going to be depreciation in 2045 in 2055 it's going to keep on happening in my opinion that's going to come from these hybrids traditional hybrids internal combustion and from plug-in hybrids as that technology just races into the future so these new batteries from sake general motors they they part own a chinese battery company They've been working on these solid state batteries. They say they'll be mass manufactured in 2026. They're already testing them. They're in several different cars, apparently being driven around China. Will they be mass manufactured in 2026? Can't confirm it, but that's what they're saying. They're also saying that these 400 watt hours per kilogram energy density batteries will jump up in 2027 to 500 watt hours per kilogram. Now, assuming that does happen, General Motors, sake, they're not the only ones saying this. Uh, there's several manufacturers making claims that are similar to this, saying they're going to hit 500 watt hours per kilogram within the next couple of years. Assume that's the case, right? That's that's going to enable electric cars to have well over 700 miles of range. I mean, we're looking at well over probably about 1,000, 1,200 kilometers of range in the real world, yeah? I know this is probably four or five years away from the mass market, but it is going to happen. And really... The first thing it's going to do, in my opinion, it's going to kill internal combustion sales in the luxury segment. Think about it. If you really went to a dealership and you bought a BMW, Mercedes, Audi, whatever it may be, some luxury car brand with internal combustion, how many people would want to buy that car in the future, secondhand? Really? I mean, if you lived in Norway right now, and you owned an internal combustion powered BMW or an Audi or Mercedes or whatever, how many people would want to buy that car from you secondhand? Considering 97.5% of all cars sold right now in Norway are electric. Your market would be minuscule. The number of people wanting to buy that car would be tiny. It shows demand. Interest in internal combustion has disappeared. The same thing is going about is about to happen in the United States. Well, maybe not the United States because you guys are going to miss out a lot of this, but in Europe, in Australia, in China, everywhere else outside of the US, this is going to change incredibly quickly. And manufacturers like Toyota who say that no one wants EVs are going to be caught with their pants down. Let me know what your thoughts are. Thanks for watching.